in this second part of the video about settling the hub for a long-term stay, I'll tell you about internet quality, which is important if you work online, about good restaurants to eat in, and about entertainment. If you didn't watch the first part of the video, find the link in the right upper corner. I also leave a link in the description. In the first part, I share the information about areas in the hub and looking for accommodation, as well as childcare. So, let's start with internet. The hub has no drawbacks apart from scattered rubbish and unstable internet. And if it's okay if you work online like a writer or web designer or something that doesn't require big amounts of data sharing doesn't demand constant video calls, it's okay. But for me, as a psychologist who consult online and for other professions like this that demand video calls, the hub is unfortunately not the right choice for a long-term stay, I'm afraid. Although there are always tips and tricks. Uh, the first time I came there, I didn't know about the existence of hotspots uh, that are more stable there than just usage of uh, Wi-Fi in the rented apartment or mobile internet. The internet connection became more stable for us when we bought a, a hotspot or Wi-Fi router, which is uh, by Etisalat. There are also ones by Vodafone, but they are more expensive. This lot costed us 600 pounds, which is roughly 30 dollars, while uh, Vodafone costed around 1000, which is almost double that much. I don't know if it's double that much better though. I heard that it's possible to find accommodation with good internet, uh, relatively good at least, and more stable than the rest of the places but uh, it demands uh, time and good luck so if you plan a long-term stay here uh, give yourself time to find a decent accommodation with decent internet or just buy a hotspot like we did also make sure that if you rent a flat in a block of flats you have your personal modem it wasn't the case at our place the wi-fi spot was the same for many apartments so it wasn't strong enough and kept on breaking. So about the restaurants in the hub. There are loads of them. For any taste, for meat eaters, for fish lovers, for vegetarians and even vegans. Unfortunately, I didn't film a lot in the restaurants, but I'll show you glimpses of it. And I will leave a list of my favorite ones in the description. Apart from local food, you can find here anything from burgers to even Japanese food, like sushi, of course, not, not more, but uh, the sushi was pretty okay. What surprised me that I couldn't find any Korean food apart from Korean fried chicken place here, <laughs> even though there are lots of Koreans in the hub, they come to dive here. Uh, um, if you don't know, I spent uh, some time in Korea in the past and I led uh, tours there and I like Korean food, that's why. This is uh, the most famous Indian restaurant in the hub, it's called Nirvana and I wouldn't say that Indian food here is authentic, although many people like it. And they have quite nice ice cream. Can I have some milk? And of course, there is plenty of seafood, which is fresh and tasty. Some people say that uh, Arabs don't know how to cook seafood, but for me especially, I'm not so spoiled, uh, or maybe I'm not such a gourmet. I quite liked it, because what do you need to do with seafood? The perfect um, way to serve it is in a grilled state, I believe or fried, but I prefer grilled. And we could find anything here.
This is one of our favorite places to eat seafood. We came here several times and this is not on the front line, but it's significantly cheaper and seafood was always good here. We tried fish, we tried octopus, uh, shrimps and everything was very good. I didn't film much in the restaurants because usually we went there only in the evenings and it was too dark to film anything or I was too tired <laughs> but believe me uh, I didn't find a single bad place in the hub which would be not delicious and of course there was nothing like food poison never everything was super fresh and I had never ever had any problems there I'd say the must tries uh, regarding food in the hub is seafood and lamb. If you eat meat, lamb is very good here. Speaking about entertainment, the hub is not a place for heavy alcohol drinkers. And uh, I know that there are a couple of bars and you can get alcohol in the little shops in the town but it's um, pretty expensive in Egypt and I didn't see any drunk people in the streets which is a big bonus. There are no nightclubs here but there are different music events especially in the desert especially with drums and with singing bowls and other sound healing instruments. Sound healing is uh, another big thing here some people organize sound healing meetings which is pretty nice and there are all sorts of uh, events for people who are into yoga different esoteric practices tantra and uh, all sorts of uh, spiritual development sort of thing spontaneous movement ecstatic dance and different types of yoga as i said to be honest, I didn't visit any of these events, mostly due to my family life and having no time for it. But if you're looking for something like this, this is a perfect place to be. Of course, if you're a beginner or even never tried things like snorkeling, diving, kiting, surfing, etc., etc., all kind of water sports, it's also a perfect place to try it if you have some extra budget. Although for things like snorkeling you only need a mask or goggles. Speaking about movement around the hub, uh, it's easy to pick a taxi anywhere on the road and it's pretty cheap. Also another way of movement here is a bike. We both love bikes, me and Pete, but this time we prefer to walk a lot. We walked like 8 to 9 kilometers every day and it was gorgeous. By the way, you should know that uh, they often demand to leave your passport or ID card if you rent a bike, but uh, we didn't want to do it. Uh, I also heard that it's possible to leave just a money deposit. If you had enough water, there is always desert, silent, eternal, and big. And we went to the desert twice. Both times were nice, even though the second time was super windy. And it's possible to do it with small kids as well. Not all the tracks, but some of them are. And people organize such trips, especially for parents with little kids, which is very good. You can find all the information on the group chats in Telegram or Facebook. And I love these chats because you can find basically anything and ask any questions about the hub and this question will be answered. Sinai Desert is magnificent. Go and check it out. And of course there are trips on quads, on camels, on horses. Basically everything you can find in the touristy places it can be found here. Another brilliant thing here in the hub is sauna. It is uh, located in the Asala area and uh, it's basically open every day but every day uh, 
there are some hours uh, open for public, there are mixed days, there are separate days for men and women. It's a sort of Russian sauna, if you know what I mean. It's very hot compared to hammam, around 120 degrees, I believe. But there's more than just this sauna in the hub. Uh, there is Malakot, mountain oasis, which is 20 minutes drive from the hub. Check out what it is in the video uh, in the link above. It's Mexican Temascal in Sinai Oasis and I can guarantee you will never forget this experience if you go there. It's good that the hubs has so many groups and chats. Since the last year there is a separate telegram group for Ukrainians. On the 24th of February, we gathered for a bonfire to mark this sad anniversary and pay tribute to those who sacrificed their lives in the horrible war. We went to the closest point, viewpoint, which is located 20 minutes walk from Asala Square. On Google Maps, it's marked as the hub viewpoint. We climbed up to make some photos and then found a place to make fire. It's a very good spot for a picnic with a brilliant view over the whole town. Another type of entertainment in the hub and not only in the hub is shopping. But especially in the hub you can find quite a few interesting shops, not just Chinese stamped souvenirs, but something like this which you can see on the video. It's a shop for recycled things, it's called Why Not? And strangely I only dropped in a few days before we left. And I usually like to have a look at things like this and not buy them. I'm not a great shopper anyway. I try only to buy things that I really need. But <laughs> that's a different story. What I like about the hub souvenir scene is there are lots of Bedouin crafts. They are pretty simple but lovely, especially rugs. It's easy to find something nice uh, and small or big to bring back home with you. Our usual okay. entertainment was Don't something smash like it, this. Okay. Oh, what a beautiful sandcastle. Wow, I'm so proud of that one. I'm so proud of my sandcastle. I hope nobody smashes it. No, you wouldn't, would you? No! No! Oh, oh, oh. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you fill the bucket up then. You can have a look, please. Uh, 
Another favorite entertainment here is Amanda Market, which takes place every Thursday and Sunday in the afternoon in Amanda Hotel. It's a place where local experts gather to see each other, to eat some food and to sell some food as well. Some people cook it and sell it here. Here I'm gonna share with you a bit of that atmosphere. Video. No, actually I'm taking video. <laughs> Yeah, no, flowers with